God make us slaves in Egypt? Why do we still have to remember that we were slaves in Egypt? Why do we have to eat the bread of affliction? God is calling us. You are responsible. You are your brother's keeper. And as long as someone is hungry, you are responsible to help them. And so the fellowship throughout Israel during this time that is most financially difficult for people of Israel, most financially difficult to have food to celebrate the holidays, we go out and we pack food boxes. So in Israel, this week our goal is to distribute 60,000 food boxes to poor needy people of Israel. And in the former Soviet Union, in the what many call the biblical land of the north, we're distributing over 125,000 food boxes. We're providing seders, uh, Passover meals for communities, small Jewish communities all over the Middle East. And even in China, in China there were Jews who turned to us and said, we want to celebrate Passover, but we don't have a place to meet. We don't have Musa, we don't have unleavened flour, could you help us? And we said, yes, Christians and Jews around the world are coming together through the fellowship to provide for your Seder. So in China this year, because of you, Jews will be celebrating the holiday of Passover. This is a holiday that is biblical. Some holidays we celebrate, like Hanukkah, happened after, uh, after the Torah was written and aren't directly spoken about in the Torah. There are only a few holidays that are directly spoken about in the, in the Torah, and those are holidays that even Jesus celebrated. We know that Passover, the Last Supper, the bread of affliction, the matzah, this is very central not only to Jews but to Christians as well. This is a biblical holiday that God has commanded us to keep to remember we were once slaves and we're now free. To remember the miracles that God, God did. And when I think about the miracles that God did during uh, past, to take the Jews out of slavery in Egypt and bring them home to Israel, well, the first thing that comes to mind are the ten plagues, right? There are ten plagues that God did. First, he sent Moses to go in and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, no, God hardened his heart. And so it took the ten plagues until Pharaoh finally let the Jewish people leave slavery and enter their promised land, Israel, and get the Torah on Mount Sinai and wander in the desert. And the truth is the ten plagues were not only a message to the Jewish people, it was a message to the world. Egypt was a world power. Pharaoh of Egypt was the leader of the world. The whole world was looking at, at, at Pharaoh and at Egypt as being strong and leaders. And what God was showing them is if you don't live according to my values, if you don't treat my people with dignity and peace and love, I could knock you out of that position of world power in one second. And so the plagues were not only a message to Pharaoh, not only a message to the Jewish people that God has never abandoned or forsaken them, but it was a message to the world to live according to God, to live according to godly values, freedom, treating other people res with respect, not knocking other people down, not forcing people to do things, but to let people live in freedom and in godly values. And if not, God can take a world power in one second and with those ten plagues do whatever he wants. God is in control. And as we say every day, God is the king. God is the king. Hashem Kuhamelech.